ያው ዲስክሌመር እንዲሆን ይሄ አሁን ዛሬ ምናደርገው ሰብሰባችን በቪዲዮ ሪከርድ ይደረጋል የኢትዮጵያ ማህበረሰብ ድርጅት ጥሪ አድርጎላችሁ ጥሪውን አክብራችሁ እዚህኛ ጋር የኛን ማህበረሰብ ሊመለከቱ ይችላሉ ብለን የመረጥናቸውን ባለቶች ወይት ለማድረግ ስለተገኛችሁ በ ኢትዮጵያ ማህበረሰብ አገልግሎት ድርጅት የቦርድ አባላቶችና በራሴ ስም እንኳን እንደና መጣች ይሁላለሁ በዚህ ስብሰባ ላይ ምናልባት የዛሬውን ጉዳዮችን የምታወያይን ሄለን ካሳ ወደ በኋላ ላይ ራስዋን ታስተዋውቃለች ግን ሁላችሁንም ሚውት እንድታደርጉ በአክብሮ ተጠይቃችኋለሁ መደማመጥ እንደንችል ማለት ነው ሄለን ለዛሬ ይዛው የመጣችውን ፕሮፖዛል ተጠቅላላ ሐሳቡን ታስረዳንና የጥያቄና መልስ ፕሮግራም መጨረሻ ላይ ይኖርናል እንደምታቆት የኢትዮጵያ መረዳጃ ማህበር ፖለቲካዊ ያልሆነ ድርጅት ነው ዛሬ ያደረገን ያለ ነው ነገር ምንድነው የኛ ኢትዮጵያውያኖች በሚደረጉት አሁን በመርጫ ላይ በቀረቡት ባለቶች ላይ በቂ መረጃ ኑሯቸው ድምጻቸውን በውቀት በተመሰረተ እንትን ድምጻቸውን እንዲሰጡ ለማስቻል ግንዛቤ ለማስጨበጥ ነው ዛሬ ተገናኘ ነው ማለት ነውና ይሄኛውን አይዲያ ወይንም ይሄኛውን ካንዲዴት ምረጡ አትምረጡ የሚል ፓርቲዛን የሆነ ሐሳብ በዚህ ፕላትፎርም ላይ ኢንተርቴይን አናደርገም ግን ይሄ ማለት ምንድነው አሁን ያለንበት ያው ሄሎ ሪያሊቲው ሁላችሁም እንደምታቆት ትንሽ አስቸጋሪ ሁኔታ ላይ ነው ያለ ነውና እንደው በዚህ አጋጣሚ ሐሳቤን መግለጽ አለብኝ ይላችሁ የምታስቡ ጥያቄም ካላችሁ ሐሳብም መጨረሻ ላይ ለማቅረብ የምትፈልጉ በነጻነት ሐሳባችሁን ማቅረብ ትችላላችሁ ማለት ነው without further ado ለመድረኩን ለሄለን ሰጣታለሁ ሄለን አንድ አንድ መታቀርባቸው ሐሳቦች ምናልባት ቢተረጎሙ ጥሩ ይሆናል ብለ ምናስባቸው ካሉ በትርጉም የሺ ያው ታግዛት አለች ማለት ነው ይሄ ነው ያለው ሄለን መድረኩን ላንቺ ሰጥቻለሁ አመሰግናለሁ እሺ ሰላም እንዴት ናችሁ ሄለን ካሰብ ባላሎ እና የዛሬ ስልስባ እስ ለካሊፎርኒያ ስቴት ዋይድ ባለት ሜዠርስ ከዚ በኋላ በእንግሊዝኛ ነው ማለኛ ትንሽ ከበኛል ግን Um I really wanted to take the time today to um to present to you all as Hab Tamu said on the California ballot measures. Um I currently am a policy and advocacy professional. That is what I do full time. Um and I work for the African American Community Service Agency in San Jose. Um so with that being said, um I'm I'm ready to move into the presentation. So if you could go to the second slide Hab Tamu. So I want to start off and preface um that ECS is not endorsing any propositions. Um all we're doing today is giving you a bipartisan presentation on what yes and no means and some of the um uh, potential consequences of both. Um during the Q&A I'd be happy to give my personal um suggestion as to what I think would be good for um our community. However, that is not the official opinion of ECS. um and we do encourage you all even after this presentation to do your own research um and make your own choices based on your own priorities and preferences um so on this slide on the agenda the ones that i believe to be the most um relevant to our community is prop 15 which is tax on commercial um and indus- industrial properties prop 16 affirmative action prop 17 parolee voting rights prop 18 which is um 17 year old primary special elections 21 rent control and 22 app based drivers but i'm going to be going through each and every single one um for the uh, 14 all the way until 25 so let's start with the first one <laughs> so ballot measure um 14 is about the stem cell research institute bond initiative so it's as simple as yes is um 
it, it's going to issue 5.5 .5 billion in bonds for stem cell research with required policy and management changes to improve historic efficiencies or inefficiencies, I should say. And no is the opposite, which is simply saying, no, we're not going to grant 5.5 .5 billion in bonds to renew um, the depleted funds. So for a little bit of history, uh, Prop 71 was passed in 2004, which gave, I believe, a similar amount of 5.5 .5 billion um, in uh, California state bonds to um, stem cell research. Um, and saying no, so this, this, this is the, the two sides to the conversation. One is, yes, you know, we want to do stem cell research because we want to, you know, get closer to finding cures um, and solutions for people who are suffering from this, and, as no, and it's very noble. However, a lot of people on the no side are arguing that, you know, this was passed, and now the funds are out, and they're asking for more money, and they want to know what happened with that money, and why was it mismanaged? Um, and the response to that is with, yes, they have come with new management changes to improve those historic efficiencies, but the question that's still lingering is, are those going to lead to the impacts that they're looking for? So again, yes and no is just um, bond related. Um, Prop 15. So Prop 15, um, this is the tax on commercial and industrial properties. So a yes would encourage, not encourage, but mandate big businesses such as, you know, Google um, and all the other tech companies here to pay property tax on their market value rather than their purchase price. Um, and then the no would just say to maintain the status quo of commercial and industrial properties paying their purchase price with an annual inflation of 2%. So for this, I think when we're looking at the Ethiopian community, we have to remember that commercial industries can sometimes be our small markets, our small businesses and things of that nature. So if you're concerned about whether this impacts you, um, just consider that the threshold is about $2 million worth of value is where um, they set the threshold for charging at um, market value. Um, so they put that in place to protect small businesses. So as a result, this could or could not potentially affect your small business, but you know that would be on a case by case basis dependent on your particular situation, but this has also been endorsed by a lot of um, small business and labor groups. So I would look to that to see what industries that you may align with that have endorsed this. Um, Prop 16. This one is probably one of the most historic and exciting of all of the ballot measures, second to the Uber driver one. Um, this one is affirmative action. So I wanted to make, take the time to define what affirmative action means. So it is a policy in which an individual's color, race, sex, religion, or national origin are taken into account to increase opportunities provided to an underrepresented part of society, meaning us, Black people, Ethiopian people in this country. So. Um, just for a little bit of history, so in 1996, Prop 209 was passed, and Prop 209 is a ban on affirmative action. Um, California is actually only one of nine states, one of nine states in all of the United States, and we're, you know, supposed to be one of the most progressive that have banned this. Um, and when we look at the comparisons, um, well, let me preface and say this. The side that says that we shouldn't have affirmative action claims that, you know, doing things like this is just going to widen the racial divide. Whereas people who say yes say that it's going to close the racial divide. And the evidence for the yes side is, you know, since 1997, which is the year after affirmative action was banned, at least looking within the UC system, um, universities, the percentage of or the presence of Black students on, in the UC system dropped by 26 points within the first year and has not gone up since then. Um, and when we compare states that do have affirmative action, we see people of color and women um, getting more access to government contracts, which we all know are very well compensated contracts, um, get more representation in universities and better um, um, employment rates with companies and government offices. So this is really just a matter of making sure that when we're looking at industries, they're removing the the colorblindness lens um, and working intentionally um, and being accountable to, um, you know, making sure there's more um, diversity in our institutions. So yes is to bring affirmative action back to California because it was banned in 1997 or 1996 and no is to keep it banned and maintain the status quo that we have now. Um, next slide, please. 
And don't worry, I know I'm going fast, but we can always go back at the end to any of these slides um, during the Q&A. Um, so Prop 17 and Prop 18, I put them together because they are both um, voter related. Um, so Prop 17 is about parolee voting rights. And in California, um, when somebody has been convicted of a felony, they lose their right to vote. Um, and yes would be pretty much giving um, felons, convicted felons the right to vote once they go on to parole. And then no is simply to maintain the status quo of prohibiting people on parole with felony convictions. Um, so this is really important because um, I'll say personally, I don't believe that having less people voting is better than having more people voting. You know, in our democracy, more, more people having a voice is a good thing. Um, so that, that's the difference between yes and no. For 17, um, 18, Prop 18 is actually about 17 year olds getting the right to vote. So if you have a child who is a senior in high school, for example, me, when I graduated high school, I was 17. Um, and I could not vote because I could not vote because I wouldn't be 18 by the time of the general election. So if this passes, if your child is um, 17 in March, but turns 18 in October, for example, this would be allowing them the right to vote during the primary and special elections because they'll be 18 by the time of general election. Um, so I hope that wasn't confusing. Yes is simply allowing 17 year olds who are going to be 18 the right to vote and no is to maintain it at, you have to be 18 no matter what for general, special and primary elections. Um, next slide. So Proposition 19 is actually one that is very confusing and complicated and has a lot of factors. So I'm going to try my best to um, kind of explain it in a way where it's all encompassing, um, which is why the slides have so much content on it. So this one in particular is mostly significant um, because it's looking to help um, victims of um, the fires that we've had, people who've lost their homes. Um, so pretty much like the big highlight of this is it'll allow eligible homeowners um, to transfer their tax assessments anywhere within the state and allow tax assessments to be transferred to a more expensive home with an upward adjustment. So that means, uh, let's say in 1994, my parents bought a house in um, LA, for four hundred thousand dollars and then their house burned down this year but the market value was 1.5 million now because we don't have a home um we buy a new home that's maybe worth two million dollars but because we lost it in that fire instead of paying the property tax on a two million dollar home they're allowing you to take your ta your about your homeowner tax assessment to the new home so you'd be paying the property tax of your four hundred thousand dollar house with of course that annual um, inflation of two percent that comes with any um, property so i think of Prop 19, that is like the biggest thing to consider. Um, the other things are smaller adjustments such as increasing the number of times. So if you're 55 years or older, or uh, you have severe, severe disabilities, etc. So this would be the person who maybe you have six kids and you have this huge um, two, three story house. Now all of your kids are gone and it's just you and your wife or you and your husband and you need to downsize your home. So this would allow you to transfer your home multiple times as you're downsizing while maintaining your old tax assessment if it's um, lower than buying a new home. Because So what this is trying to do is protect um, elderly homeowners who are trying to downsize and, you know, um, continue that way. Um, the other thing also is inherited homes. For example, if my parents had a home and now they're moving to Ethiopia and they want to pass it on to me, I would be able to keep the tax assessment and the property tax value that they were paying um, rather than when the deed switches hands from my parents to me than me paying the market value. So this is all about trying to protect homeowners from, you know, kind of getting um, bought out of the area um, and making sure, you know, the people who live here can maintain um, their properties during transitions and things of that nature. Um, so that's pretty much in summary what the yes means. The no is the complete opposite saying no, we don't want all of those things. And in response, I think the main arguments between yes and no is yes is saying this is protecting homeowners and making it more accessible and realistic to one pass down homes um, and also to, you know, grow old and still have a property rather than, you know, having to move out of the state. And then no is arguing that this is widening the, um, the uh, wealth 
the wealth gap, meaning people who have money, people who own this property are getting all these cuts and ways to save money. And these property taxes are supposed to be going to our schools, our public school system and to other public services. And when we're making all these cuts to protect people who own these properties, we're also limiting our cash flow for these public services. So those are the main two arguments for um, yes and no. Um, I recognize that this is a lot of information. So again, I want to remind you all, we can go back and cover this in the Q&A um, if anything was confusing. So you can go to past the 19 and go to 20. So the next slide, yes. Okay, so Prop 20. Um, this ballot initiative is about criminal sentencing, parole, and DNA collection. Um, so this ballot initiative will require persons convicted of certain misdemeanors that were classified as wobblers or felonies before 2014. So things like shoplifting, grand theft, and drug possession, along with several other crimes, including domestic violence, prostitution with a minor, to, um, to submit to the collection of DNA samples for state and federal databases. Um, I hear an echo. Thank you. So a yes vote supports the initiative to add um, these crimes to the list of violent fel fel felonies. So that includes, like I said, shoplifting, grand theft, and drug possession, um, for which early parole is restricted. So yeah, and then a no vote opposes this initiative to add these crimes to the list of violent felonies. Um, so I think the biggest controversy here is recognizing um, that some of these petty crimes, I'm trying to think how do I articulate this in an um, unbiased way. <laughs> So yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. So, you know, this is just saying that, you know, we should be adding more crimes to what is considered a violent felony. So adding more things to be categorized under that and then restricting early parole for people who are experiencing that. And then those crimes in addition would also require DNA collection. Um, and I do wanna highlight and say that within the justice system, DNA collection and things of that nature have negatively and disproportionately impacted people of color. So that is definitely um, something to consider, but that is yes and no. So we can go to the next proposition. Rent control. This one is interesting for a lot of people. So a yes vote enacts rent control on housing occupied over 15 years, with the exception for landlords who own no more than two homes. Um, and the no would be prohibiting rent control housing occupied after February 1st, 1995, um, and housing units with distinct titles such as single family homes. Um, so a yes vote supports this ballot measure to allow local government to enact rent control. So under the Costa Hawkins um, bill that was passed in 1995, landlords have been allowed to increase rent prices to market rates um, when a tenant moves out. Um, and this is about, you know, vacancy decontrol. Um, and the ballot measure would require local governments that adopt rent control to allow landlords to increase rental rates by 15% during the first three years following a vacancy. So what this is trying to do is if, like, in, um, implement rent control to you know help diversify the people who are living in this area because as of now um, apartments that were maybe built in the 70s are at the market price of something that was built maybe 10 years ago and what this is trying to do is you know mitigate the value of that and try to um, restrict how market values are set because it's just growing astronomically based on what people are able to pay versus what the property is actually valued at. So it's trying to control the increases by up to 15% within three years of vacancy. Um, so that is what yes and no is. So again, yes is to enact this new version of rent control. And then no is, you know, maintaining the Costa Hawkins Rental Act policy of 1995. So pretty much the way things are now. Um, so yes, next slide. So this is the one I'm sure many of you, this is why you came today. <laughs> so Prop 22 is the app-based driver employment status um, ballot measure. So it has been branded as 
big company versus small driver, um, labor versus corporate and the boss and management. Um, and I'm here to break it down because there's actually a lot of different um, interests here to consider. Um, and it really does not come down to those, you know, David doesn't come down to the David and Goliath fight. Um, so to start off, so a yes um, for Prop 22 supports app-based drivers as independent contractors um, and a no, um, May ins insist that app drivers should be categorized as employees of rideshare companies and not contractors. Um, so with the yes, um, it will also adopt labor and wage policies specific to app-based drivers and companies by providing partial benefits for 15 hours a week and full coverage for 25 hours a week. Um, so I actually had a couple meetings with um, some of these app-based um, company, app driver companies, and I asked them, why is why now why is it on the ballot what is the history of it and what is going on and i also talked to different um uber and lyft drivers and the reality is when we're looking at yes and no you have to remember that the the gig economy that is uber lyft doordash all of those delivery services um it's its own type of labor so right now, when you're looking at, um, I think it's SB 10 with the Senate bill on labor, you're, it's, the government kind of defines it as either you're a full-time employee or you're a contractor, you're one of the two. Full-time employees get everything, contractors get nothing. And what the gig economy is doing is kind of building its own path. It's actually its, its own thing. And so when you're voting no for this, I want people to know um, that it's not just about, oh, drivers should have, you know, access to healthcare and should have these benefits. It's also looking at the things that they could potentially lose. So for example, let's say you're an Uber driver and you're driving from 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. at the airport doing airport rides because that's the busy time. Now it's noon and you want to move from Uber and you want to do DoorDash because that's peak hours, you know, so you have the accessibility choose your time and your schedule. So when you vote no, that right goes away for the drivers because now you are an employee of Uber. For example, you pick a company, you're an employee of Uber and they give you these hours that you have to drive from maybe 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. And that's not the hours you necessarily wanna work, but those are the hours that they give you. Now you're an employee the same way that you would be at Starbucks or the same way that you would be um, at another job where they set your hours. Um, and when I did my research as to what are the hours that um, app-based drivers are driving, and at least if I speak, if I can speak for Uber's data, um, when I looked at their stuff, 80% of their drivers are only driving 15 hours or less. So when you think of the full-time driver and the narrative of those that are driving 40 to 60 hours, it's actually like 5% or less of drivers that are doing that. Um, but the large majority are doing 15 hours or less. So if you're looking at the larger market of employment and people who are doing this, you'll actually see that most of those drivers are more interested in maintaining the independent contractor status. Um, and in response, so when you're looking at Prop 22 in addition, it's not saying that we want to keep them as contractors and that's it. There's also an additional um, aspect to the policy that's, like I wrote here, incorporating that if you drive 15 hours a week, you get partial um, coverage, which is a half coverage on health from the affordable, um, I think it's Affordable uh, Health Act something. And then the affordable full coverage for 20, Act. huh? Affordable Care Act. Thank you, Affordable Care Act, thank you, ACA. Um, and then for 20, if you're driving 25 hours or more, they're considering that to be full-time, that's full coverage. And that's actually very generous given that 40 hours is what's considered the legal um, definition of full-time. So the Prop 22 yes side is really trying to pave that way to redefine another definition of employee to look at what does it mean to be a contractor in this gig economy. In addition, so that is just on the driver's side. That is the interest between what is a benefit to the driver and what is the actual um, layout of who the drivers are. And like I said, 80% are actually driving 15 hours or less. Um, and also a lot of drivers are um, employed for various um, companies, like I said, Uber, DoorDash, Postmates, Lyft, like people are moving between wherever it has um, higher traffic. The other thing to consider is the consumer interest. So right now, um, 
if Uber and Lyft and these rideshare companies or even DoorDash and Instacart for grocery deliveries were to become, um, to take on all these employees as full-time employees, the price would go up significantly and that impacts the accessibility of, you know, everyday people, you know, and especially like during COVID, we've seen, you know, more so than ever, um, how people are being financially impacted and how much Uber, Lyft, and grocery delivery services have created accessibility for people, especially our seniors who may not be able to go out or may not have family who can go out and pick up things for them. Um, so there's also that aspect of um, accessibility. And I just wanted, so for Prop 22, those are the two interests that I'm going to be highlighting, which is, like I said, the driver and then also the consumer. Um, and yeah, we can come back if anybody has any particular questions, but that is the overall um, perspective of it. And like I said, I did do research from both sides to really talk to the drivers as well as talking to the corporations and looking at the data of what are the demographics of who's driving. Um, so yeah, we can go to the next proposition. So Proposition 23, um, this one really comes down to one thing. So it's so a yes supports this ballot initiative to require chronic dialysis clinics to have an on-site physician while patients are being treated, report data on dialysis-related infections, obtain consent from the state health department before closing a clinic, and not discriminate against patients based on the source of payment for care. So this one, um, you can break down to David versus Goliath in that sense, in terms of interest. So what this ballot measure is trying to do is create accountability for these dialysis clinics. Um, and I think the most important thing here to highlight is not discriminating against patients on the source of payment for care. So that means not turning people away just because they don't have an evident um, way of paying for things because um, I think a lot of people are being turned away right now for that reason. And in addition, like it says, it's trying to make sure that there's at least one on-site physician while patients are being treated. Um, and that's just a matter of increasing quality of care and reporting data on dialysis related infections. Um, all of those things come down to just, you know, uh, accountability for um, patients and the clinics. So a yes is that they should have all of that accountability and all those things and they should not discriminate. And then a no is maintaining the status quo that those things should be at the discretion of the dialysis clinic. Um, and yeah, that is Prop 23. Prop 24 is about privacy rights and um, enforcement of that initiative. So as we all know, the internet it's not really new because it's as old as me or if not older, but it is new in terms of policy and government infrastructure around managing it. As I'm sure you've seen um, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook going through the ringer about selling um, uh, people's search history and data and what are the ethics of that. Um, so pretty much what this is looking to do is one, expand the state's consumer data privacy laws by providing the choice to prevent selling and sharing. So that means your YouTube search history, et cetera. You have the choice to say, I don't want this to be shared or utilized, um, or you can. And you know there are pros and cons to both. Um, so to share your user data, you're gonna get more um, access to information and more customized experience. But of course the turn is that your information is gonna be sold. Um, and then the no is you're gonna be limiting your access to that. But at the end of the day, it is your choice. And then the second um, arm of this is they want to create a privacy protection agency to enforce this policy. Because the thing in government is they may put a policy, but if nobody's monitoring it and enforcing it, it, it might as well not be there. It's kind of like telling your kids to do something, but if you're not really gonna discipline them, they're gonna do it anyway. Um, and yes. <laughs> so, and then in turn, no is to oppose additional privacy protection um, laws and as well as opposing the creation of this protection agency. So this one is pretty clean cut and simple. It's just about, you know, giving um, consumers the choice to say how they want their data to be used as well as, you know, moving forward and developing a new agency to monitor and control that. Um, so that's 24, 25. This is our last one. Um, I'm really happy we were able to zoom through it. <laughs> so Prop 25 is to replace bail with a risk assessment referendum. So a yes vote is to uphold the consented legislation, Senate Bill 10, uh, which would replace cash bail risk assessment 
for detained suspects awaiting trial. And then ANO would um, repeal the contested legislation, thus keeping in place the use of cash bail for detained suspects awaiting trials. So what this pretty much means is, so a bail is if you, if I got um, arrested for shoplifting and now I go, um, I go to jail and then I have to, I call my mom and I say, mom, I'm in jail. My bail is set at a thousand dollars and the thousand dollars is, you know, if my mom were to pay that, then I get to go home until my trial date. Um, and what this does is instead of if, so if yes passes, for example, depending on the person, for example, me, I was an A student in school. I have a degree, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure by that risk assessment, I seem like somebody who would show back, show up for my trial date and doesn't need to sit in jail until that day. They may let me go and um, may waive the, ba the bail. Whereas no is all people must pay bail regardless of how noble of a citizen they are or how good of a person they are. Um, yeah, so the pros and cons to this is kind of looking at one, what are they like utilizing to set this risk assessment? How does it impact people of color in particular? They may look at a um, African American or an Ethiopian young man and say, "Oh, he's high risk," um, and that could be based on you know racial discrimination. And then they may force a bail um, versus somebody else who may not be a young black man may be looked at and say, "Oh." He, he comes from a good family, his family is blah, 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 and doesn't have to pay the bill. And in turn, when you think about that, um, it's important to say like, huh, the people who probably do have access to the money to pay this bail are the ones that are going to be benefiting from this risk assessment. And the no, you, you know, if do you see where I'm going with this? So it's important to look at it that way. So this is a new way of going about things that could potentially you know, help with financial issues, but then it's also important, I get, again, to look at how are these risk assessments being defined and who is writing it. So a no is to maintain the status quo of everybody has to pay bail, and yes is um, saying that some people would have to pay bail and some wouldn't based, based on that risk assessment. And that is the California State Ballot Measures. Thank you. Questions. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. That is a very outstanding presentation. Uh, so let's open the floor for questions and answers. Um, unless, Yeshi, if you would like to go back to the slides and probably uh, interpret it in the mic. Uh, Helen did like a wonderful job, and I don't even try, you know, like to, to go through that. So uh, I think you should go ahead and open it for discussion. Okay. Nice. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I let you feel free with Jacho and Batato. Basi area light, yeah, I can link in the Tulu. We are all let you know and Gavza Chalet and the Tesata. We are all long desire or run home. Bemruch our light is set up. I let you them such on them set. I let you a meal. Assumption is unknown. Usually, in the I don't know presidency or the state governorship or the Senate and the House. Because of the ballot, which good or Inform the on a decision make my dragon the Nichil Longri. Yes, are you on ten malano? Nasamshin Achin, who lachum, them sachun, set a lachon zare, about Gatami, the social media platform on a ya yot number. Buzu so busy by voting in Telai, them sachin must have had Lebenemil, eco midder Rogudum to Chaluna, and the Mendeno, Sata de Gasat Miata Pasanon. Gana Satum Sainessa, a preventive mechanism most at the Minichilinion, Zaritene Gagarna Bacho good doge, Becatatam, Catatania Balona Mangedim in Yaniot, impact a lacho. On the Cadem Helen and Dalachu, the over leaf Teleluchum may have up based the own ride sharing platform watch, as I lay Miso Rogano Chachin, Zare Bemu was son of Sarilai. Bandam Bellila Manged impact on a lumalet, no Lelochum proposition which in Desinacho. And now girls alone who good touch Kalu, when the Mutajim by Hon Betakla Lakamrucha Garbet has a 
የሚሰማቸው ወይ የምጠይቁት ነገር ካለ በዚህ አጋጣሚ እንድጠይቁ አንድ ሁለተኛ ነገር ዛሬ ሄለን ያነሳቻቸው ሁሉም ባይሆኑ አንዳንዶቹ በአማርኛ ተተርጉመው የኢትዮጵያ ማህበረሰብ አገልግሎት ድርጅት ዌብሳይቱ ላይ አሉ። እና ecssanose.org ነው አድራሻው እዛ ላይ ሄዳችሁ እነኚህን ወደ አማርኛ የተመለሱትን ማየት ትችላላችሁ ይብን ከመርጫው ጋር በተያያዘ ማን ነው መሳተፍ የሚችለው እንዴት ነው ድምጽን መስጠት የሚችለው ለምሳሌ ያልተመዘገበ ሰው ካለ እንዴት ነው መመዝገብ የሚችለው የመርጫው ዴድላይን በ19 ነበር ግን ስቲል እስከ ኖቬምበር 3 ድረስ መመዝገብ የሚቻልበት መንገዶች አሉና እነሱ ሁሉ በጣም ዲቴል በሆነንትን እዛ ላይ ቀርበዋል ዌብሳይታችን ላይ እሱንም እንድታዩት በዚህ አጋጣሚ ጋብዛቸዋለሁ ለጥያቄ ያው ክፍት ሆኗል እናንተ ነው እንግዲህ ምናየው Hi this is Michael um if there's no uh tayake um can, I missed the beginning part um can you go over the first about 8 or 10 of them if we have time if there's no questions sorry um i can briefly go over um those and sure so have some would you mind uh, opening it i won't go into it into the full detail that i did um but i can give a basic explanation and maybe that'll prompt some some questions yeah that'll be good be brief is good thank you yeah no problem okay so start from the first one So prop 14 is about stem cell research. Um so a yes would say we need to issue 5.5 billion in bonds um to go towards that research and a no is saying we shouldn't and pretty much this is the second time they're asking for the funding to do this. Um and it wasn't I don't want to say it was ill managed but they didn't yield the results or come up with any um uh what's the what's the word strides forward in their research. So the the debate here is is that money really going to get us where we need to go or should that 5.5 billion in bonds be repurposed to other things like education um and other important issues um next one so this one is on tax on commercial industrial property so it's looking at big companies like google um facebook um and charging them property tax based on their market value rather than the purchase price that they paid um and the cool thing I actually didn't say this before so um the tax increase that will result from prop 15 will generate probably an estimate of 77 million to San Jose and close to 265 million for Santa Clara County um and of that 40% of the revenue from this increase in tax for these commercial industrial properties would be funneled to K through 12 schools community colleges and it would prioritize low funded districts um and communities in lower property tax areas so that is going to definitely be impacting people of color um and the other 60% is going to go towards local government and other services um and the main controversy here that people are concerned about and something that may or may not affect the Ethiopian community is um how this will affect you know um commercial industrial uh, properties that are um categorized as small businesses so they have a threshold of i believe 2 million which is there to protect small businesses from being um just completely taken down by this property tax initiative so that's prop 15 So 16 is affirmative action. So this is pretty much um an equity policy that would force institutions um to you know no longer look at the world with color blindness. So it would increase the um Ethiopian and black population within our universities in the UC system and CSU system um more access to government contracts um as well as higher employment rates. I'm going to know would just be to maintain the status quo of how things are now and a yes would be to change it to um bringing affirmative action to California. <laughs> 
17 and 18. So 17 is giving um, felons on parole the right to vote. So a yes would allow them the right to, to vote and no is not giving them the right to vote. And then Prop 18 is giving 17 year olds who are about to be 18 by the time of general election, the right to vote during um, primary and special elections. So if you're 17 in March, but you'll be 18 by November 3rd, saying yes to this would let that 17 year old vote in March. Um, and a no would be saying that no, you need to be 18 for any type of voting activity. Um, 19, this one is a complicated one. Um, I don't think I can go through it quickly, but I'll try. So this one is about property tax transfers and it's supposed to be um, like mostly benefiting um, people who are impacted by the fires. So if your house burned down, let's say you bought it for 400,000 or 200,000 20 years ago, it burns down, you buy a new house that's worth a million, you're able to pass over that property tax rate that you were paying for that $400,000 home rather than paying the new property tax of a $1 million house. So this is trying to make it easier for people who like are victims to things like that, um, as well as increasing the number of times, like if you're 55 or older, um, and you're trying to transfer your property tax to a new home because maybe you had a family with six or eight kids and now it's just you and your your spouse and you can't walk up the stairs so this is going to be allowing you to save money on old property tax if you were to buy a new house and downsize um, and then no in summary would be the opposite saying we shouldn't be allowing any of these adjustments and you'd be maintaining status quo um, next slide um, again one more Um, how, uh, Michael, how, when did you hop on? Yeah, I was about to stop you. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to. Cause when you said off, the first eight or 10, I was yeah. like, maybe he thought it stopped. It started at one. It starts at 14. Yeah. <laughs> it started at 14 and it was the, you actually went and get to the, the last one about the, the home was when I jumped in on. Um, ah, okay. So perfect. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't get the whole, um, if you can go back to that slide. Mm -hmm. Um, 19 um yeah the no so, slider this one right here so okay. when it says keep the number of times that a person over 55 year old or with severe disabilities can transfer their tax assessment at one mm -hmm. so right now it's only at one but yes. if this passes then they can do it up to three times, three times. yes okay can you give like a quick example of that like being yeah, so for example, let's just say um, you have a, a two-story house and you and your wife, you live there and now you're 80 years old and you can't go up and down those stairs and it's too many rooms. So you guys want to buy another house and downsize. So what this would allow you to do is, you know, if you bought this house 40 years ago, meet that big house for $100,000, now um, you're buying another small house, but a small house now is worth a million dollars. You're able to take that um, property tax value that you're paying on your big house to your new property. And that's trying to protect people who, you know, are older and are living on a fixed income to be able to maintain their quality of life while also meeting their needs of needing to downsize and not go up the stairs and things of that nature. So that's what it's designed for. Um, and then a yes is going to be allowing that to move from one to three times. So people, some people are saying that's a little excessive. Um, and other people are saying that it's not, it just really depends because I think there are some pros and cons to the yes thing that the no doesn't cover. But does that answer your question? It does. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Anybody else? I'm surprised no questions about Uber and Lyft. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hot topic. <laughs> okay, I guess a screen and share my drag as well again, you must tell it. Yeah. Okay, at the Yaki Astaid, the Yalla to feel good. That's how I chose the Maglas Mala. I think Freywood has a question, Masaleen. Madle. Freywood. Yeah, um, the Yaki and the Yanagar, I think. Uh, Discussion about Marina Moni Michelala, I think it's coming away. Have time to take star again, but I think I'll have you home, Missy. Comfortably, Managagar and Dimitri, and there's you, I think Helen understands. I can understand the Marina, yeah, and now Bangrizin Yabit Melissim. 
እንደዛ ማድረግ እንችላለን እና እንደዛ በዛ ረገድ አሁን እኔ የዚ ፕሮፖዚሽኖቹ ለምሳሌ ለ23 የዲያሊሲሱ ኮንፊውዝ የሚያደርገኝ ነገር ምንድነው ለምሳሌ ያህል ዶክተሮች እንዲኖሩ ዳያሊሲስ በሚያደርጉ ጊዜ ኦን ሳይት ዶክተር እንዲኖር ይላል ስለዚህ ኢት ሳውንድስ ጉድ አይ ዋንት ዶክተር ቱ ቢ देयर ራይት ግን በሌላ በኩል ደግሞ የስ ለቮት ካደረክ ደግሞ ዶክተሮች ብዙ ሊኖሩ ስለማይችሉ እነዚህ የኮሚኒቲ ዳያሊሲስ ክሊኒኮች በየቦታው እየተከፈቱት ያን ስለማያደርጉ ዘክተው ይሄዳሉ ነው ኮንሱ ስለዚህ ወዴትኛው እንደምትሄድ ሪሊ ዳታ ብዙ የለንም ለምሳሌ የስ ብየን ደግሞ ተዘግተው እንደገና ዳያሊሲስ የሚያደርክ ሴንተር እየጠፋ ዶክተር ቢኖር ምንም ማላረክ ከሆነ how you gonna balance that na what's your suggestion on this አንደኛው ጥያቄ ነው um but over like demo i think on over you said that you talked to a lot of drivers mm-hmm. and now what was your feedback that you got from the drivers ክንያቱም የኡበሩን የ20ቱን i think understand አረጋው አለ ሁን በደንብ እና በጣም ብዙ ነገር አትስቴክ አለ ኡበር ኢንትረስት አለው ስቴቱ ኢንትረስት አለው ድራይቨር ኢንትረስት አለው ከድራይቨሩ ውስጥ ደግሞ አንድ አንዱ ሰው በድሚው ጣና ያለ ሰው ምናልባት እንደ ኢምፕሎይ ሆኖ ቤኒፊቱን ፉል ያገኝቶ ሊኖር ሊሰራ የሚፈልግ ሰው ይኖር ይሆናል አንድ አንዱ ደግሞ ፍሌክሲቢሊቲ ሆኖ ይፈልጋልና ፐርሰናሊ ወዴት ቮት እንደማረጋቃለሁ ግን ኦቨርኦል እንደዚህ በኮሚኒቲ ደረጃ سنነጋገር ፊድባክም ብናገኘው ጥሩ ነበር ሰው ምንድነው የሚሉት የኛ ኮሚኒቲ ልጆች ምንድነው የሚሉት ነገር ዲ ዩ ሃቭ ኤኒ አይዲያ ኦን ዳት ሪጋርድ So for the first one in regards to the dialysis clinics like I would definitely say that that is a legitimate concern um as to what the pros and cons are that there is that possibility however um I do want to say that the likelihood of them shutting down because of having a full-time doctor is low I think that that might be a little bit of um exaggeration by the opposite campaign in that sense I think it's looking at it kind of of what's within the issue because i think the most important is looking at the margins that the clinics are taking away versus the actual cost of operations and what this would be doing is just skimming from the margins to benefit the um patients um you know when you're looking at things of like making sure that you know they're um writing down the reports tracking the infections all of that adds labor hours and care um and yes yeah, so, that's so that's that's what prop 13 is and in terms of your question about um the lift and uber drivers so um again like like exactly what you said there is like there's no monolithic driver experience meaning there isn't one type of driver there's multiple types and multiple interests and like i said 80% of drivers are only doing 15 hours or less meaning the vast majority want that accessibility um and of course there is the interest of uber and lyft etc to make people full time but it completely changes the business model and there are things to consider like operations would shut down for at least 2 months because this is not their business plan they would have to change the whole business it's not like this passes and then tomorrow it's different like there would just be no uber no lift no no doordash no anything for minimum 2 months as they adjust to the price of usage would go up significantly and that also impacts the whole point of the service which is you know helping people with mobility um especially in a time during covid for food delivery and things of that nature um and then the yes is also giving the benefits that the drivers need so it's kind of an all encompassing one so it's allowing people to maintain their independence it's allowing people the choice to drive full time if they want to do that um it's allowing people to pivot from for example if i worked at starbucks and right now it's 11 a.m. and it's slow but i look over there and pete's coffee is busy i can't just get up and go to pete's coffee as a starbucks employee but with the way the gig economy is set up if i'm working uber and i'm a uh, driver for you know d- doing the airports and now i see that doordash is really picking up then i can just switch over and be a driver for doordash right now and that's the bit the beauty of the gig economy and that's and like this is personally i would say that the yes side is paving a new way forward to create to push the government to create more policies to manage this new type of labor because this has just never existed and they're trying to force it into a binary contractor versus full time when in reality gig economy is its own thing and trying to fit in one or the other doesn't work so yes allows for more and no would just completely force everybody including that 80% of people who are only doing 15 hours to have to work a certain amount of hours and it would be hard to manage that because for example if you're a student my my when i was in school my course schedule shifted 
every three months. It changes every three months. And it would be hard, like whether I have class meetings and this and that, it would be hard for me to live my life and be a driver. You know, so it's like when you look at the vast majority of people who are doing it, changing it to that isn't really in their benefit. The Ethiopian community in particular, I didn't survey them in general, but I mean, I looked at the overall data of Uber drivers and Lyft drivers. And the other thing is, also, when you do it to that full time extent, this is also something that's really important to consider that I didn't say before. If no passes, it would really shift the accessibility to access of this app because it would be more concentrated in more metropolitan areas like San Jose and San Francisco, because the demand in these small towns here and there would go down. Right now, the way that it is, you can get a ride anywhere that you want, and soon services would be limited to where the hot spots of people are. So that's what I mean by there are lots and lots and lots of consequences with no. And I think that, again, personally, this is not an ECS opinion. This is my opinion as Helen Casa. I would say yes is in the best interest of um, the community, one as a consumer, one as a driver, um, just because of you know, all of those reasons. Um, and I think that this is an opportunity to pave the way forward. And I know that in the future, if there are more additions and there's more demand that the drivers are not being treated well enough, another ballot measure can go forward to demand more things. But I think as a first step forward, this is a really good one. And I just think we have to have the foresight to know that things can be amended. For example, affirmative action was banned in 1996. And now today in 2020, we're talking about bringing it back. So nothing is forever once we see the consequences of one thing or the other. So I would say give this a chance, me personally. Yeah. Uh, have Tamu, may I come in? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, no discussion no again. And then also, Yenya Forum, and then Yon, and then your favorite other girl, Billen, endorse him another good person. I'm a fetter, my child, the person. Uh, who let Tanya the more, uh, the criminal about Samania percent, Yemilo statistics. In your community, like directly translate ladder, Yemichi the Bethel Monetali no richila. Bezusa Wachak Adonilam Saliba over Na Benazi Nagaruch Mulu Mulu Mitara Daruna, Mulus Atachon Bezas at him, Miss Rosa Wachuno Radu. And now who lets Sunim Gen, Men and Madat and Dohane Magbatu or Nogan, and ya personal in Helen Ayanchimut and position in Behonim Gen, and endorsement ladder Gonagar in the Lendita work now. Yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Actually, Actually, primarily, Helen, So we have translators here. it was an Allen. I think what uh, uh, roughly what the higher day can dig at the Marlin. That a yak and lacho a state and lacho. Kazim Garbay as we yak at the Mofar are gallo. You see a singer in the Aina Tecla Levalu good douch lie. In Yam Kapar Pazu Church in Wust. Yenya community is a low society guarantee. Integrate Madragi Chilal. The Mum Kazam Tenishalfo. Culture run and date preserve Madragi Chilal Bemil. Kaliluchi Drujitushkar partnership veteran, Rombalefo, Bezi Be Hezbukot Araulai, Tesat Fenal Bezamalen. Nabuzo Chachus at Samot Karum Teda Wulachum, Emil Magni Tachumam Leonichila. Ahun Dagmu, Bezi Bemurchaulai, Indorsum Ban Nadurk, and the idea promote an Aragam Kadam Detavalo, and the candidate promote an Nadurgam Gun, Yenya Mahabarasa, Bedem Bander Standing Novacho. Dems at Chon Cisatu, Bell Catheter Messer Rata Dems and Disatu, Lemaschal no him platform as the Gajanona, Casario good digarum by Genany, Minum Chigrelum, Asavachun, Bamarina, Madamati Chalat, Yakim Kalachun, Dumalan. Aptamu. Okay, uh, and Kajigara better like necessarily busy. I am busy. Then I got to know that life charity and balka masarat. Met some fellow guy on the government. No, and then the church too. When them the money not them sato no. Zila yal tasato gan busy tapian. Which yam is gawag yam let actually no ruchilalu. 
እና ተስፋ መቁረጥ ግን የለባቸውም በእውነት መሳተፍ ከፈለጉ የለት ሁለት ፕሮቪዥናል እንደነዚህ ባልባሎት ማድረግ ይችላሉ ሄደው እዛው ተመዝግበው እዛው መምረጥ ይችላሉና የምርጫው ቀን ደግሞ አንድ ቀን ሳይሆን ሁለት ሶስት ቀን ስለሆነ በእነዛ ቀኖች ውስጥ ሄደው መታወቂያ ይዘው ተመዝግበው እዛው መምረጥ እንደሚችሉ ለየአካባቢያችሁ ሰዎች ለምታገኙአቸው ሰዎች ኢንካሬጅ ብታደርጓቸው ጥሩ ነው ብዬ ነው ማስበው ይሄንንም እኛን በጣም የሚመለከቱት ጉዳዮችን ማስመልከቱም ሆነ በአጠቃላይ የፕሬዚዳንሻል ለመሳተፍ ሰዎች አሁንም ቢሆን አላመለጣቸው የሚለው ነገር እንዲያቆብ ታደርጉ ጥሩ ነው ሌላ ስታይ ጥያቄ የለም በጣም ጥሩ ስራ ነው የሰራቸው ሄለን ማለት ነው። እንደ አዳግም አድርጋ ሁሉ ነገር ስለገለጸችው ጥያቄም የለም ሁሉ ነገር አብራር አብራርታውልኝ ማለት ነው። እኔ እንደዛ ለመረዳው ጥያቄ አይ ላይክ ዳት። አንድ ነገር ለማለት መፈልገው ዛሬ ያው ሁላችሁም አይታችሁ በዋብነት እንደምትወስዱት ሌላ አንድ ተጨማሪ ነገር በኢሲኤስ ለማድረግ እየሞከርን ያለ ነው። እዚያ ሀገር ተወልደው ያደጉ ወጣቶችን በሙያቸው መጠተው ሊያገለግሉ የሚችሉበትን ፕላትፎርም ያመቻቸን ያለ ነው። አሁን በሴንሰሱ የተሳተፉ ከጀርባ ሆኖ እንዲመድረክ ላይ መጠተው አልተናገሩም እንጂ በርከት ያሉ ወጣቶች አሉ ቮለንቲየር ሆነው ያገለግሉ። ዛሬም እንግዲህ ያንን የእንትን የሚያደርግ ነው የሚያመላክት ነው ሄለንን ጋብዘን እዚህ መጠታ የምታውቀውን እንድታስረዳ ማድረኩን ያመቻችንላት ማለት ነው በነገራችን ላይ ያው ባለፈው ግራጁዌሽን እንትን ኢቨንት ነበርን እንዲሁ በቨርቹዋል ነበር አጀ ነው ሄለን እንግዲህ በዚህ አመት ከሳንታ ክላራ ዩኒቨርሲቲ በፖለቲካል ሳይንስ ነው ግራጁዌት ያደረገችው እሷ ቀደም ራስዋን ስለላስተዋወቀች ማለት ነውና አንድ ያደረግ ነው ያለ ነው ነገር ይሄ ነው ወጣቶችን መድረክ አግኝተው ኮንትሪቢዩት የሚያደርጉበትን ፕላትፎርም ያስተካከልን ወደዛ እየሄደን ያለ ነው ለማለት ነው ሌላ ጥያቄ አስተያየት ካለ ጊዜ አለን መቀበልን እንችላለን አይ ቲንክ እኔ አንድ አስተያየት መስጠት እንፈልገው የኢትዮጵያ ኮሚኒቲ በኢትዮጵያ ኮሚኒቲም ሊመሰገን ይገባዋል ብዬ ነው ማስበው ምክንያቱም እንደዚህ ያለ ነገር ሲደረግ አይ ቲንክ የመጀመሪያው ይመስለኛ ዘኔ በኩል የተሳተፈ ያላቀ ብዙ ጊዜ ምርጫ ሄደና የመሰለኝን ነው ዝምብዬ አንድ አንድ ጊዜ ደስ ያለኝን አጠቅሯሉ ዝምብዬ አንድ አንድ ይቪን ሰዎችንም ስመርጥ ማይኖሪቲ የሚመስለኝን ዝምብዬ ከበዋለሁ ምን እንደሚሆን እንኳን አቆ እና ሪሊ ኤጁኬተድ ሆኖ መምረጥ እና ዝምብሎ ባቦ ሰጥ መምረጥ ቀደም እንዳልከው የተለያየ ነገር ነውና ኢሲኤስ ይሄ እንደዚህ ያለ ነገርን በማድረጉ ሪሊ ኢንካሬጅ መደረግ አለበት ወደፊትም ያሁኑ መጀመሪያ ነው ነገ የሚቀጥለው አመድ ደሞ የተሻለ ብዙ ሰው ኢንቮልቭ የሚያደርግበት ነው ያቱም እዚያ አካባቢ 20 30 30 ሰው አለ ምናም በሚባልበት አካባቢ ይሄ ደግሞ አሁን ዛሬ ተነጋገርንባቸው ነገሮች አንድ አንዶቹ በተለይ እንደ ሬንት ኮንትሮል ያለ እንደ ፕሮፖዚሽን 20 ውበር እና ድራይ አፌክትም ያለ የዳያሊሲስ ነገር ስንት ሰው ነው ያለበት ነገ መልሶ እሱ ነው አፌክትም ያረገው ቤት ቁጭ ብሎ ሰብቷል ስለዚህ ወቶ ዲስካስ አድርጎ በሚመስል ነገር ቦይሱን አሰምቶ ካል ሆነ እንኳን የሚቆጭ ነገር የለም አሁን ሬንት ኮንትሮል የሚባለው ነገር እንደፈለጉ እነሱ እንዲጨምሩ እድል የሚሰጥ ኮንትሮል ይደረግም ይል አይም ሹር ሬንት አርጎ ሚኖር ሰው በሙሉ ዝም ብለው እነሱ እንዲጨምሩ ታይፈልግም ነገ ግን ሲጨመርበት ቢያለቅ ሰዋጋ የለውም ይሄን የመሰለ እድል አሳልፎ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ሞር ሰው ፓርቲሲፔት እንዲያደርግ አሁን እንደዚህ ያለ ፎረም ሲከፈል ደግሞ እዚ ያለ ነው ሰዎች ለወደፊቱም ሰዎች እነ ይሄ ነገር በጣም ኢምፖርታንት እንደሆነ የነገር ብዙ ሰው የሚመጣበትን ሪሊ ዲስካሬጅ ለማድረግ ሳይሆን እኔ ዲሳፖይንትመንት ነው የሚሰማኝ አሁን ከያለ ተርናውቱን ስታይ ማለት ነው ግብቷል አንተ ለክማችሁ ለፍታችሁ በዩ በቫይበር በኢሜል በቴክስት በቮይስ ሜል ያን ሁሉ አድርጋችሁ እንደዚህ ያለ ሰው ሲመጣ ትንሽ እንትን ያረጋልና ለወደፊቱ እዚህም ያለ ነው ሰዎች ሌላውን ሰው እንዲመጣ እንዲሳተፍ ኮሚኒቲው አክቲቪቲ ያረገ ስለሆነ እንዲደግፍም ጭምር ነው እኔ ለማለት ተፈልገው እና እንደዚህ ላደረጋችሁት ነገር አይ ሪሊ ዋንት ቱ ሴይ ቴንክ ዩ አንኪ አፍታሙ ሌላ ሰው ከሌለ እኔ እድል 
ቀጣይ በዚህ አጋጣሚ ኢትዮጵያን የኢትዮጵያ ኮሚኒቲ ራሱን ለማጠናከር በጣም ጥረት ያደረገ ነው ወደፊት ደግሞ ይሄንን እና የመሳሰሉ ስራዎችን በጥራት እና በተሻለ መልኩ ለመስጠት እንዲሁም ደግሞ ለህብረተሰባችን ቢሮ መስጠው ለመገልገል ለሚፈልጉ ሰዎች የተለያየ ኢንፎርሜሽን ይጥላላቸው ሰዎች እሱን ፕሮቫይድ ለማድረግ ሌላም ሌላም ብዙ ብዙ ጥያቄዎች መጣሉ ወደኛ ያን ሁሉ ነገር ለማስተናገድ አንድ ሰው እንኳን ቢሮ በፓርት ታይም እንኳን ቀጥረን የሚያስጀምርበት ሁኔታ ለማስተዳደር እየተጣጣረን እንደሆነ ሳት ሰሞ ሰምታችሁታል ያልሰማችሁ ካላችሁ ደግሞ አሁን በጣም እየሞከርን ያለ ነው በእውነት በገንዘብ ድጋፋ የሚያደርግልን ሰው ተኮሚኒቲው ማን ተማለት ነው ማበረታታትና ማስገባት እየሞከረ ነው እና ባካችሁ ከቻላችሁ ቦራ ሰርቨር ወይንም ደግሞ በስድስት ወር ማንድ ጊዜ ከፈለጋችሁ የስድስት ወርን ባነስ ማንድ መዋጮ አድርጣችሁ ህብረተሰቡን ጥቅም የሚያገኝበት ነገር በተለይ ደግሞ ለምሳሌ ሀኪም ቤት ወደፊት ለሚሄዱ ሰዎች የትርጉም አገልግሎት ወይንም ደግሞ የትራንስፖርት አገልግሎት የሚሰጥበትን ሁኔታ ለማመቻቸት volunteers-ን ወደፊት ለማሳተፍ እንዲቻል እንዲዳር ነገሮች እንዲሰሩ መጀመሪያ ቢሮ ተከፍቶ ይሄንን ነገር ኮኦርዲኔት የሚያደርጉ ሰዎችን ለማምጣት ጥረት ያደረግ ነውና ለባካችሁ ዌብሳይታችን ላይ ሄዳችሁ የወራዊ መዋጮ የሚደረግበት ወይም በአመት ይሆን በመትቱሉት መልኩ የምታደርጉበትን ነገር ስለማመቻችን በዛ መልኩ እንድፈዱ እንለምናለን እናንተ ደሞ ባትችሉም ወይንም ደሞ እናንተም ካረጋችሁ በኋላ ለሌላው ሰው ሁሉ ይሄን ነገር ብታስተዋው ብታስተዋውቁል በእውነት ከዚህ በተሻለ ለልጆችም ለአዋቂዎችም የሚሆን እናትን ማን ነው ለእናትና ለአባቶች ደሞ ወይንም ሽማግሌ ለሆኑ ሰዎች ማዋያ የተለያየ ነገሮች መስጠት የሞከረን ስለሆነ በዛ መልኩ እንድትሰዱ ለማሳሰብ ነው ታንክ ዩ ቬሽ ለስተይ ታሳ ከተገኘ ነበረ አጀንዳ ወጭ እንዳልሄድ ብዬ ነው እንጂ አሁን የሺ ባለችው ላይ አንድ አንድ ነገሮች መጨመር ፈልጋለሁ ነው አክቹሊ ርዳታ እንድታደርጉልን ብቻ ሳይሆን ኢሲኤስ አዳዲስ ነገሮች ኢንትሮዲዩስ ይያደረገ ነው ቀደም መለስ እንዳለው ዛሬ የተደረገው ይሄ እንትን ምርጫን በተመለከተ መዋያት ብቻ ሳይሆን ከዚህ በፊት ባልተደረገ መንገድ ባስተዳደር ቦርዱ ውስጥ ለመሳተፍ ፈቃደኛ ያላቸው ፈቃደኝነት ያላቸው ሰዎች እንዲሳተፉ ለጠቅላላ ለዙ ኢንቪቴሽን ምልከን ነበር ፈቃደኛ የሆናቸው ግዜ ያላቸው ቤዝ ሚኒመም ኳሊፊኬሽን ያላቸው ሰዎች ለመሳተፍ መጥታቸው በዚህ ጉዳይ ላይ ተሳተፉ ብለን ያው ስካሁን ባልተደረገ መንገድ አዲስ እንትን ህዝቡን ጠይቀን ነበር ከዛው ውስጥ እንግዲህ ያገኘናቸው የተወሰኑ ሰዎች አሉ እነሱን ቃለ መጠይቅ አድርገን ገና ወሳኔ ያልሰጠንበት ከዚህ ጋር በተያዘ እንግዲህ ኢሲኤስ ሲመሰረት የዛሬ 29 አመት ወይም 30 አመት ሊሆን ነው ኤፕሪል 91 ነው የተቋቋመው እና ያኔ ሲቋቋም ሜምበር ቤዝድ የሆነ ድርጅት አልነበረ እና ለረጅም አመታት ኢሲኤስን ሜምበር ቤዝድ ለማድረግ ጥረት ሲያደርጉ የቆዩ የቦርድ አባላቶች አሉ አክቹሊ መጨረሻ ካልተሳሳትኩኝ የዛሬ አንድ አመት ተኩሎ የሁለት አመት ገደማ ይመስለኛል ዩናን መስሊ የኢሲኤስ ቦርድ ካሁን በኋላ ኢሲኤስ ሜምበር ቤዝድ መሆን አለበትና አባል ለመሆን መስፈርቱን የሚያሟሉ ማንኛውም ኢትዮጵያዊ መሳተፍ ይችላል የሚል ውሳኔ ያሳለፈን ወደ ተግባር አልተለወጠ እና እሱን ለመስራት እኔ ራሴ በዛ ኮሚቴ ውስጥ በአዲስ ኮሚቴ አዋቅረን ወደ ተግባር ለመለወጥ እየተንቀሳቀስነ ያለ ነው ሆፕፉሊ በሚቀጥለው ፕሮባብሊ እንግዲህ በስድስት ወራቶች ውስጥ አዳዲስ ባይ እንትን ባይሎ ነው አይሞዲፋይ አድርገን ኢሲኤስ ወደ አዲስ ትራንስፎርም ሆኖ ሜምበር ቤዝድ የሚሆንበትና ማንም የፈለገ ሰው አባል የሚሆንበት በደንቦ መሰረት ድምጽ የሚሰጥበት የሚመርጥበት የሚመረጥበት መድረክ እንዲሆን ፓብሊክ ኦን እንዲያደርገው በጣም እየሰራን ለመስራትም ፈቃደኛ ሆነን እየተንቀሳቀስነ ያለ ነውና በዚህ በኩል ለማገዝ ፈቃደኛ የሆናቸው ሰዎች በተለያየ ኮሚቴዎች ውስጥ በገባ ሞያው አለኝ ችሎታው አለኝ አስተዋጽኦ ማድረግ ፈልጋለሁ የምትሉ ሰዎች 
ወደ ሚያን እንድታገኙን እንትን አደርጋለሁ የተለያዩ ኮሚቴዎች አሉን የባህል ኮሚቴ አለን ከጤና ጋር በተያያዘ ሙያተኝነትን የሚጠይቅ የጤና ኮሚቴ አለን አሁን ይሄ ሜምበርሺፕ ይሁን አይሁን የሚለው አክቹሊ እንዴት ትራንስፎርም ይደረግ የሚለው ትንሽ ሊጋል የሆነ እንትንም ስለሚጠይቅ በሱ ላይ የሚሳተፉ ያው የህግ ችሎታ የሚያላቸው ሰዎች በዛ ኮሚቴ ውስጥ የታቀፉ አሉ። እና ሌሎችም ኮሚቴዎች ስላሉን በዛ በኩል አቅም እንደፈቀደ ለማገልገል ሁሉም ሰው ቢሳተፍ በጥሩ ነው። አባኛ ያለ ነው ያው ተርማችን እስከሚያልቀ ድረስ ነው የኢሲኤስ አባላቱ ቦርዱ አባላት ተርም ሊሚት አላቸው። እና ተርማችን ሲያልቅ አዳዲስ ሰው መጥቶ በአዲስ ሊያስቀጥለው ካልቻለ ምንም ሊሆን አይችልም ማለት ነው በነገራችን ላይ ቀደም መለሰ ሲያመሰግን እንደው በመስጋና ላይ መስጋና ለራሳችን መጨመር ባህል አይደለም ብዬ ነው እንጂ ኢሲኤስ ሊቀጥል አይችልም የነበረ የተወሰኑ ፈቃደኛነት ያላቸው ሰዎች ከኪሳቸው ገንዘብ ያወጡ ጊዜያቸውንም እየሰጡ ነው ሳይዘጋ እስካሁን ቢያንስ ሜንቴይን ተደርጎ እየቀጠለውና ለወደፊት የተሻለ ሥራ መስራት እንዲችል ፍላጎቶቹ አሉ አሁንኛ የሚደወልልን የተለያየ ኬዝ ነው በነሰሰር ላይ እንደው የትርጉም ሥራ ወይ ደግሞ የወከልና ሥራ ብቻ ሳይሆን ሰፋ ያሉ ጥያቄዎች ነው የሚቀርቡልን እንደምናየው ማለት ነው እና ያንን ሁሉ ለማስተናገድ ብዙ የሚሳተፉ ሰዎች ሙያተኞችም ያስፈልጋሉና በሩ ክፍት ነው ለማለት ነው እን ጀነራል ዝም ብሎ እንደው በማለት በመናምን ሳይሆን ፕራክቲካል በሆነ መንገድ በሩን ከፍተን ሁሉንም ሰው ሊያስተናግድ እንዲችል ያው ቀደምም ሲከፈተ የሰው ሰባ ተናገር ያለው ይሄ ድርጅት ነን ፖለቲካል ኢንቲቲ ነው የማንም ሰው የፈለገውን ሊያመን ይችላል የፈለገውን አይማኖት ሊከተል ይችላል ወደ ኢሲኤስ ሲመጣ አዝሎም ጋዝ ኢትዮጵያዊ እስከሆነና ሰባው ኢርዳታ ፈልጎ እስከመጣ ድረስ አገልግሎት ለማግኘት ክፍት ነው በሩም የሆነው ማለት ነውና እንድትሳተፉ ሁላችሁንም በዚህ አጋጣሚ ጋብዛለሁ ከእንትኑ ካጀንዳው አጥቻለሁ አይ ነው ሄለን በጣም ይቀርታ ጠይቃለሁ በጥያቄ ስላልቀረበ ነውና እግዚአብሔርን ይያለቀ ነው የመጨረሻ ጥያቄ ያለኝ ወር ደሞ አስተያየት አለኝ ምትሉ ካለ እድል ሰጣለሁ ኦኬ እንደ ተረዳኝ እንግዲህ ያው ጥያቄ ያለ ማለት መሰለኝ ማስተያየትም የለም ማለት ነው ሁላችሁም እዚ ስለተገኛችሁ ከልብ በጣም እናመሰግናለን ሆፕፉሊ በኢሲኤስ.sanoze.org የሚለውን ዌብሳይታችን አይታችሁ በአማርኛም በእንግሊዘኛም ከመርጫው ጋር የተያያዙ ጽሁፎችን አንብባችሁ በዚህ ምርጫ ተሳተፋላችሁ ብለን ተስፋ እናደርጋለን ያው ቀደም እንዳልኩት ዛሬ ሶሻል ሚዲያው ላይ በርከት ያሉ ኢትዮጵያውያን በተለያዩ ጉዳዮች ላይ በዚህ በዚህ ምርጫ ላይ ውሳኔ መስጠት አለብን የሚል እንትን አንስቷል ግን ነሰሰርሊ ከፕሬዚዳንሲው ብቻ ሳይሆን ሌሎች የኛ ህይወት ላይ ኢምፓክት ያላቸው በርከት ያሉ ጉዳዮች ስላሉ ሆፕፉሊ ዛሬ ተነጋገርንባቸው ነገሮችም አንጻራዊ ግንዛቤ ስላላችሁ በእነኛም ላይ ድምጽ ተሰጣላችሁ የሚል ተስፋ ነው ያለው ስለመጣችሁ በጣም አመሰግናለሁ ሄለን ግጃ በጣም በጣም ከልቤ ነው አመሰግነው ይልመድብሽ ነው ማለት ታንክ ዩ መልካም ለሊት ለውላችሁ ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ በጣም ታንክ ዩ አይ ታንክ ዩ ፍናንስ ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ